Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin James from Scalp Micropigmentation Australia and welcome to another five minute fast facts on Scalp Micropigmentation, the Pro Artist Series, where we're interviewing some amazing scalp micropigmentation artists from around the world, getting their tips and tricks, how you can get the most out of your scalp micropigmentation transformation. Today's artist is one of the world's most well-known scalp micropigmentation artists based in New York, USA. He is a first generation scalp micropigmentation practitioner and one of the first in the world um, to become a full-time artist. He has been in the industry from the beginning, changing thousands of people's lives affected by hair loss every single day. He is the name of the brand, one of the trio that make up the Jero Hair Inc. Company, offering both treatments to men and women of New York, as well as providing training with the Academy for Scalp Micropigmentation. His company won Best um, or Biggest Contribution Award um, at the Team Micro Awards in 2019. Today, we are talking to the one and only Jonathan Giroux. Welcome, Jonathan. How are you guys doing? Hey, Caitlin, thank you for having me here on this uh, lovely Friday quarantine night. So I'm Jonathan Giroux, for anybody that don't know that, but um, I am a scalp micropigmentation artist, also a musician. So art, it's an art form that goes hand in hand. So um, uh, I've been in the industry a little bit over 10 years now, and uh, this is actually into my 11th year. And um, this is something that it's, it's always been a passion of mine, you know, as far as, uh, you know, helping others. You know, I've always, you know, it, this all started with my mother's cancer. She started losing hair, you know, it was getting off in patches. So uh, during them days, it was scalp pigmentation wasn't like out there at this time. So it was more like hair, hair transplants and uh, makeup putting creams on the hair and different things. Did you guys see I got my hair back? I, I actually was just thinning, but uh, I had the SMP under my hair. I'll tell you guys a little bit about that. But um, anyways, back to my mother's situation, that's how I came across, you know, the scalp pigmentation world because there was one guy in uh, Florida who was a tattoo artist doing it. And then there was a guy in, uh, in the out in UK in London. He was offering this. At the time, maybe they were doing one or two people a month. So um, in Florida, I, I was training with this tattoo guy, artist out there. And um, he was more of this like backyard tattoo shop. It wasn't like a real seriously run company at the time. So I, I was in there just, you know, watching him for a whole year. And then towards the end of the year, I just started actually working on heads by myself. But during that few months, I was just like, I was, it's like my uh, beginning stage, you know, of doing scalp pigmentation. And one of my first clients I worked on was my cousin. And my second client was, I don't know if you guys know who Robert Anzalone is, Joe Scalp, but he was actually one of my second clients that I actually performed on. So, but um, during them days, we're the only, I know at that time, we're the first two or three guys in the whole U.S. that were actually doing this treatment because his hair clinic was still in London at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was there was only based I think there was only one or two people at that company during them days. But um, so my mother, you know, when she was losing her hair, I did some research. But then after um, I came across scalp pigmentation, I was like, you know what, this is a good good form of you know hair loss option instead of having to go through you know getting um, hair transplants or putting makeup on the head. And um, probably a year into that is when she passed away. So I was never able to actually perform this treatment on her scalp. So that's, it's, it was a pretty, it was a big blow to me, you know, in my, um, just the whole demeanor of everything. I was just, it was a low point in my life. So, um, I took a sacrifice, you know, I left my hometown and traveled to LA at the time where I, I set up one of the first companies with uh, his hair clinic, me and Zhang were out there. And, um, from there, it's just, I just, I gave up my whole life just to, to do this. You know, I, I really believed in this as a, an option for to help people and you know grow grow this whole industry but um so but my i feel like my mom's spirit she what drives me you know as my success and how a lot of you know a lot of good things been happening to me i'm always blessed but um mm -hmm. that's pretty much the beginning of it that's how it started but um brilliant all right and um, you. you're well well known for um a video that went viral called got it done which was filmed in yes. New York Times Square. Tell us a little bit about that, the idea behind that, and um, how much fun was that to create? That was a exciting video for us down at you know at the Drill Hair Inc. We um we had a uh, one of New York's uh, a comedian that's Mr. Commodore. He's one of the biggest comedians on Instagram. He was just previewed in a uh, Fifty Cent's uh, Fifty Cent show. Um, I 
think it was called power or something. But uh, we all, he had the treatment done. He's had it for a few years. But we all decided, me and him and Eric, another five or six guys went down to the city. We had like maybe a thousand bucks and, and like hundred dollar bills. But we we go up to people and we ask them, can you spot the tattoo on uh, this individual? So all of us had this treatment. I had my head buzzed. And um, so and nobody was able to actually guess it and win the money, except for one guy. Um, he knew about Fauci tube. He's like a famous yeah. um, YouTuber. Yeah. He's known because he went to a company that really messed up his head. So, but one guy spotted, he's like, oh, I could tell that's uh, scalp pigmentation. So I think we only gave out $100 bill that night, but we just went through Times Square, just going up to people. We filmed the whole process. It was a really great time. Really good times on there. So we'll put a link below um, in the video here so that you can um, check that out if you'd like to for anyone who's watching. Great. Lovely. All right. Well, um, tell us a little bit about your business there in New York. Um, where exactly can people find you um, and who works with you there? So we're down in Manhattan, close to Times Square, maybe a couple blocks on uh, 144 West 37th Street. Um, so I've been in New York, I would say four years now, I've been doing scalp pigmentation in the New York region. Before that, I traveled everywhere. I was out in LA, uh, Miami, Houston, Chicago. Um, and during them times, I was, when I was traveling, I was setting, as, as I traveled each state uh, for his hair clinic, I was actually one of the first artists to like open up in Miami. And I, I'd, I'd stay there a year, um, open that clinic up, then I'd move to Chicago, open that clinic up as one of the first scalp pigmentation artists in each of these states. And then from there, I just, I, that's how I kind of grew my reputation. You know, I just, just traveling, meeting all people across the world. And during that time, I was just developing my skill, you know. So that's another thing in the industry. You always want to, like, it's good to see a client progress over two or three years. So when you see that client, you see how your work, your work is after years. You know, a lot of times you, if you do a client within a week or two, you're not going to see that initial result. It, it could take a month to six months before you see like the long-term results. So mm -hmm. I've seen thousands of people throughout my years of this guy's healed and, you know, just seeing how the long-term results happen over a 10 year span. So, so uh, what I did is I took that and um, I brought in Eric Roberto. Mm -hmm. He's uh, in New York city. He's my partner in Jiro hair Inc. And he, he's uh, one of the master barbers in New York city. He, he runs a real successful company out here with uh you know cutting hair and he's won like probably one of the, the biggest award shows in the industry of in barbering world so during that time me and him um he was a client of mine at the time about five six years ago and he'd always say oh let's get into business together and so i was kind of like i was still like in um you know in a, a medium point i was like i didn't know if i should partner with people because of my experiences with past companies um, I opened up a company called Herrick and the, the business deal kind of fell through in there. So it's always, you know, when you have a partnership, you got to have a, a certain amount of trust and you, there's got to be a connection. It's like getting married to somebody. If the marriage ain't going to work. You're not going to do it. So with Eric I found, you know, he was a good, good partner and we succeeded and he brought the barber world world into the scalp pigmentation world, at least in the United States here. And we we're able to expand our, uh, the, the skills and spread the awareness to other barbers. So, um, so then we got and, and we started training. I started training more people. We got Air, um, Juan Caliado, um, Elvis, uh, Vic. Uh, who else we got? Um, a lot, we got another two or three other guys working on it, but all very you know successful, trained. Well, most of these guys trained for at least a year before they even start working on scalps. So mm -hmm. it wasn't something we just brought them in immediately and they would just start working. So mm -hmm. that's really important. Is just to kind of you know make sure everybody's trained properly before we even put them on a client so but that's i think you know the machine the the company is what makes a lot of the success you know it's like same you know it's it's who's behind is what really counts you know what i mean it's not just like the company's name drill hair inc but it's actually you know drill hair inc's a company it's not just me it's so it's everybody who's a team with us that that yeah. drives the system so yeah brilliant well done it's um it's Thank amazing you. to see how you've progressed over the years and and what you've managed to achieve um, yes. 
One of the most commonly Googled questions and, and um, one of the most commonly asked questions during consultation is, does it hurt? At the end of the day, this is a form of tattooing. Um, so let's have a chat about if, if, um, if scalp micropigmentation is painful. Um, would you walk us through your own experience of getting scalp micropigmentation and how you would best describe the sensation to anyone listening? So my own experience, um, I've had the treatment you know, over 10 years. But I did actually have some laser removal because back in the day, um, I was kind of like a guinea pig even to myself. I'd actually practice a little bit on my hairline and I'd do some spots with some of the inks that were, were, were being used in the time. And I was actually, I was developing some of my own inks mixing, you know, mixtures. So, um, and then the, the guy who originally did my first treatment, the inks that he was using was actually tattoo inks, which caused a green and a blue shade to uh, some of the scalp. So I wind up lasering off the ink and they had to redo the, the pigment with uh, the inks that I actually mm -hmm. started branding out myself so but um massive difference you know it's a, it has a you know at least eight nine year track record with the inks that I've, I know they always worked they never changed colors but um one thing I know is I always stay away from like the the tattoo inks you know there's special there's a special inks that obviously you know there's, there's inks that got to be used in this industry and um but the painful it wasn't for me I mean I knew I, I initially when I got into this industry, it wasn't even about me. It was more about helping my mother's out because she was losing her hair. But, you know, at the time I was thinning. So I was like, you know what, let me try it on my own head to see how, how it would look under somebody who's not really bald, but maybe this diffuse thinning. So as you can see, you guys see it. You can almost see some of the silhouette of the scalp pigmentation under, under my hair. So, but if I buzz my hair, it actually looks full. It looks like I have more, more hair if I buzzed it compared yeah. to having a little bit longer so but the pain for me it wasn't it wasn't bad at all um i think this the the idea of the outcome is gonna outweigh the pain mm -hmm. so like even at our own company you know we get every woman that we worked on they don't feel no pain it's crazy like every single female comes in we'll do two or three sessions on them they don't feel nothing it's, i don't understand i'll have guys who are like mma fighters tattooed their face and then, you know, if I'm after a couple of hours, they're saying it's painful. So it's like everybody's pain threshold is different. So mm -hmm. it's just how bad you want it. You know, if, if some people, it's this hair loss, it's really emotional turmoil. So they, they're going to, they'll go through any pain just to, to fix it. So, but it's not like, it's not like a excruciating tattoo pain. Like, you know, I got tattoos in my chest, everywhere. So, but the, the scalp, you know, it's more bone there. So it might be a little bit more sensitive in some spots. But more, well, I'd say 98% of guys, they, they power through it. And at the end, they're grateful that they've done it. So. Absolutely. So on Thanks. average, what would you give um, the scalp micropigmentation feeling out of 10? So if one is um, relatively low and 10 is quite um, severe pain, where would you place the feeling of scalp micropigmentation on the scale? Scale through one to ten, I would say it's probably around like a four or five, mm -hmm. around there, around four or five, depending on, you know, how how your body and how your you know your skin reacts to pain. I mean, um, it's just, everybody's pain's different. You know, it's I, I believe it's more psychological too. You know, if you just take your mind somewhere, mm -hmm. you you won't feel the pain. It's kind of like most people put their headphones on and they they zone out. Or I'm sitting there having conversations with them. So even some guys they love talking. So. Yeah. Well, that was that a little bit of my next question. How, um, what can you suggest to people who are going into a scalp micropigmentation to help keep themselves comfortable? So obviously music, good conversation, um, anything else that you can recommend to your clients to help them have a, have a pleasant experience? I would say um, avoid like, you know, any sun exposure maybe for the week or two. So your, your skin's not any sensitive or no redness. Um, avoid any like the, the dry skin. Make sure you got a clean scalp when you go into it. And um, this this come in with the uh, your mindset, you know what I mean? This, you don't want to sit there and just like thinking about the needle in the skin. You just you just got to take your mind somewhere. So it's, it's I would say it's ninety eight percent of it's in the mind. Two yeah. percent it's just prepping your body or something. So yeah, and if people are particularly nervous, they can always speak to their doctor about taking some form of pain relief medication um, as yes. well. Um, perhaps having a good meal beforehand as well, so they've got a full tummy is also another way. Yes. Yeah. People keep people comfortable. We say, uh, yeah, avoid you know any caffeine beforehand. You know anything that's going to make your body more jittery. Um, uh, there's there's 
there's there's like some medicine medicine doctors can give some clients some guys will take a percocet or something but we don't recommend that but we you know um there's there's other options out there i've seen a guy came in with a spray doctors use it to spray their teeth to take them uh the, the test for any like sensitivity but it's like an ice spray so they'll spray their scalp and it freezes the skin it's like a temporary 10 minute freeze i've seen guys come in with that i've seen i've seen them try everything yeah. Some guy came with an ice packet. He would hold it there for 15, 20 minutes, do the area, then he'd move it here. And I've seen it all. I've seen him do every every trick in the book. But I guess above all, if people need to take a short break, um, stand up, have a drink, um, get more comfortable and sit back um, to keep them keep themselves comfortable, that's always an option as well. Yeah, I take many. Yeah, I take usually about three, four breaks a session. So give them a chance to breathe. And once they see the initial hairline, you know, especially somebody who's a Norwood Seven, they, they, that's you know, they they don't even care about any sensitivity or anything. Once they see the hairline, they'll they'll go through the whole thing. They don't even, they don't even think about the pain. So yeah. And um, generally speaking, how long does an average session go for? How long do you normally book out for someone? So as as far as the treatment goes, like how long the sessions are. So for us, it depends on the level of hair loss. I would say anywhere from two to four hours a session, yeah. you know, depending, you know, that's with breaks, obviously, you know, if you need a, a few minutes here and there, but um, yeah, two to four hours a session. That's quite manageable. Um, yeah. And tell us a little bit, why did you decide to, to start the training academy? What was the idea behind that? Um, so th with the training, um, I think we just started doing the training maybe like four or five years now, four years ago. But um, before that, it's always uh, scalp, the scalp pigmentation industry. It's always been more of like uh, uh, most of these artists are like independent contractors. So there was never like any company out there that's like, you know, here, here's the training. That's this will train them, mass produce training people. It wasn't there was one out there, but I don't want to talk about them too much. But um, literally the um, the training was more. It's because I've seen a lot of work online. There's a lot of, you know, you do see a lot of bad jobs out there. And so I started researching, you know, like, where did some of these, these bad jobs come from? Mm -hmm. Some of them are actually, I've seen guys saying, hey, I've seen your YouTube video. Uh, what, what ink do you use? What needles are you using? So a lot of these are the kind of guys that are actually, they might be hurting other people's scalps out there because they don't take the proper training, you know. So that's another, the, the, the training academy was, to try to you know protect the industry and the, the reputation of scalp micropigmentation and we just wanted to get more students that are actually doing good work out there so we can uh, just make sure the industry has a good reputation because we us as a community you know especially in the scalp pigmentation world uh, we all have the main goal is to you know protect this the reputation and just to keep producing good work mm -hmm. so that's the number one reason why we started training because we wanted this we wanted to train the students to do the right thing and put good work out there so their work ref, you know ref, ref, oh, their work ref, like reflects our us as a whole so yeah but, brilliant and thank um, you. is there is there one um transformation story that you'd like to share with us that's been um you know that sits really well with you that you know you you felt really good about changing that person's life is there one story you would like to share um there was this i've had so many of them mm. I think there was this one kid um, from London, but he had, he had uh, he had alopecia. He was like a model, you know. He had, he always had the long hair. He's a young kid, a lot of hair, and um, he, he he always stuck with me because he flew from London out to the United uh, from, to New York to get the treatment done. He was actually referred by a friend, Greg Greg Bottomley High, referred him to me, so I wind up doing one of his sessions. But um he always stuck to me because you know the kid was so such a young kid but i always told him you know if there's a chance your hair is ever going to grow back you know let's keep you know keep a nice natural light treatment on your scalp and you know 10 years maybe if they come up with a cure at least your hair can grow through the scalp pigmentation you know that goes for anybody in that is looking for this you know if there's ever a cure the you know they, the hair can grow through the treatment and the scalp pigmentation is not going to damage any of the, the scalp mm -hmm. Yeah, brilliant. So so he definitely, yeah. Long way for someone to travel to see you. So that must have um, been amazing for you as an artist to feel really privileged to have helped him. Yeah, that that was a that was a big that was another viral story. That story kind of went traveled everywhere. Daily Mail did an article on me about that one, and we've 
it, it just it kind of hit a lot of you know a lot of emotions in people through the world when they see something like that i think so but stuff like that is helps what brings the industry forward more is just spreading more awareness and bringing the attention to other people so yeah excellent well thank you so much thank for sharing you. the tips and tricks and um how best to to deal with the sensation of getting scalp micropigmentation thank, thank you thank you part of the five minute fast facts on scalp micropigmentation <laughs> thank you appreciate it thank you thank you so much appreciate it. appreciate being here thank you and if you have any oh there was oh there was one more thing um there, off the record but there was i don't know if you know this but we did lose an employee of ours to COVID 19. i don't know if we can mention that yeah yeah go for yeah, it i couldn't mention so the this COVID thing um let me take over okay so this COVID-19 is definitely, um, it's definitely a serious thing going on here in New York City, where we're based. And um, in the beginning, you know, a lot of people, they, they think this corona is just more of like, you know, they read a lot of these articles, Facebook, and they, you know, some people don't believe it's, you know, it can actually affect them. I personally had, you know, three or four people that I know had this, this, um, this corona. And uh, we actually had, we actually lost one of our um, office, um, office workers to this disease about a few weeks ago he was 19 years old mm. his name was gabriel but um that's definitely um it's, it hit us hard you know we just you know we send love to his family and um lots of blessings and prayers to his way but definitely um it's it's definitely it just makes us want to be a company you know be a better company and just kind of really help as many people and just, just keep the show going so yeah i'm so sorry to hear that it's um yeah it's time to return to work i'm sure things will feel different around there without him yeah yeah definitely that, that, that's where you know i don't want to face it but it's just it's a reality but he yeah he is always there in the morning i go there in the mornings like around eight o'clock and he'd be i'd always share my music with the kid you know he, he'd always you know the generations of music are different my age and his age but he'd always give me his opinion of him being the younger generation of how my music is so uh, I'm definitely going to miss that about the kid. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. You. Um, we really appreciate it. I loved chatting all things scalp micropigmentation with you. So, um, take thank you. <laughs> hope to see you soon.